Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Allen and welcome to a brand new series. This new series is called Dish the Dirt, where I discuss kind of, I don't want to say it's the darker side of plants, but I will discuss various, you know, scandals and investigations into, you know, the misdemeanors of the plant world, should we say. So I thought I would kick this series off with something that is still quite relevant at the moment, and that is the philodendron pink Congo. So if you don't know what a philodendron pink Congo is, I'm kind of going to go into, well, everything about that. And I'm basically going to explain why this plant is a scam and why you probably should not spend your money on it. So the first thing is the pink Congo itself. What is it? Uh, how does that compare to other plants such as the pink princess? You know, what is the difference? A lot of people don't realize that it is a different plant necessarily. The second thing I'm obviously going to go into is why this plant is a massive scam. The third thing I'm going to go into to is what do the sellers have to say about all of this and you know what to do if you've purchased one and all the rest so that's a very 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 quick rundown of the things I'm going to discuss in this video but it does get a little bit juicy so please bear with me and as you know with these videos your girl gone got a philodendron pink congo I I went out and spent the money on it more on that in a second so before we start on this pink congo and why it is a scam I think it's really 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 important to understand the difference between this plant the pink congo and the plant that we know and love to be the philodendron pink princess So the philodendron pink princess that is, to be honest, quite highly sought after, usually has patches of pink variegation, sometimes white variegation as well, but mainly pink variegation spread throughout. Now this variegation is permanent, uh, you do have to maintain it via pruning, but that's kind of the same thing as most variegated plants. It is produced under tissue culture, that's not to say it can't occur you know, naturally necessarily, it's just at the minute they are in mass production via tissue culture. So although they have been mass produced, kind of artificially, the variegation is persistent, providing you, you know, prune it and preserve it. Now, the pink Congo is something slightly different. The pink Congo has kind of come about because of everybody's, you know, desire to have these philodendron pink princesses. I've, I've seen huge price tags on the internet for these things. They are quite sought after plants. So this is how the pink Congo has kind of come about. But what I will tell you about the pink Congo is the philodendron pink Congo doesn't actually exist. I know, it just bear with me, it doesn't exist. It doesn't, it's a fake. So this here is a philodendron pink princess. Now you can see here, it has, you know, big sectoral chunks of variegation. Doesn't always have to be sectoral. I have one uh, next door that's a little bit more speckled, but generally speaking, green leaves, patches of pink, the pink color actually, you know, persists through the plant, providing you prune it. It won't just randomly disappear or anything of the sort. Conversely, the philodendron pink Congo is a little bit different. Now, let me tell you why. The old leaves here, as you will see, are green and the new ones coming in currently are pink. So that is a big, big difference between this one and of course the pink princess in the fact that the pink princess just has variegation in the same way that a variegated monstera would have variegation. This is a little bit different. This has pink leaves coming in and these leaves here are green. It's worth noting that the price points on this plant and this plant are currently quite similar. This one here I did actually buy from a pretty prominent UK seller for £140. So what's, what's the big deal here? Well, this here, this philodendron pink Congo is not real. I said before, it doesn't exist and it doesn't. This plant is a fake. People were hearing reports of these plants just reverting, i.e. no more pink at all. Like the, the leaves would initially come through as pink and then they would fade to green and then eventually there'd be no more pink at all, which they thought was very odd. However, for the longest period of time, these were kind of just rumors. So no one really had anything to go off. And because these do take some time to revert, nothing was really popping up on social media per se. So after hearing these rumors circulate on the internet for some time, a plant collector named Robert McCracken did a little bit of research into, you know, the hidden secrets behind this pink Congo and where it may have come from. And he found some pretty interesting stuff, needless to say. Robert did put a post on Facebook announcing the information, you know, what he found out from his research. 
I'm going to now read you that the best I can. I may have to blank some things out and I will tell you why, you know, after I've read the post out, but I just want to read this to you now. So Robert has since edited this post, but I'm going to read you the original one that popped up on Facebook uh, maybe a few weeks ago, I think. I've just finished researching the product and process that induces the temporary pink color in philodendron pink congo, aka chameleon, translated from Indonesian by Google Translate. The product is blank, so that is, you know, a chemical, a form of auxin that when applied as instructed, stimulates ethylene production in high concentrations. Ethylene is the gas that is used to turn unripe green tomatoes bright red for our grocery store's produce departments. It is also used to make stunning shades of pink and red in imported Korean echeverias. I've seen the effect of ethylene in greenhouses heated with wood-burning stoves which emit the gas. White brugmansias that bloom in the winter are pink. I'm sure other readers know of more examples. Please share privately or in groups. Help prevent disappointment for enthusiastic buyers and help avoid damage to the reputation of well-intentioned sellers. Everyone who is not actively practicing fraud is equally a victim. Note that the Pink Congo is a good product, produced originally for events like pink-themed weddings. When all involved are informed, it can be a beautiful floral effect. So I found out this myself after, you know, this popped up on Facebook and this led to my post under my shop, the Rare Plant Shop, basically warning people about this Congo, warning them not to buy it, explaining, you know, what actually happens, i.e. the plant won't stay pink forever, it will turn all green and basically it's a fake. So if you do want to go and read what that says, I will leave the link to that in the description. So that post itself and the whole Congo situation did lead me to wanting to make this video and to be honest by extension this series because I would like to lift the lid on a lot of this kind of stuff. I reached out to Robert McCracken on Facebook just to say what information he had, what research he had to back this up and all the rest. So from this post actually being you know around on Facebook a lot of sellers or a lot of interested parties should we say began to contact Robert asking about this chemical in question basically for their own gain because they wanted to try through some you know means necessary reproduce this effect in possibly these plants possibly other plants as well so robert did the responsible thing and he edited his original facebook post which is why i've just told you you know i read out the original that i happen to have and now if you see the post currently you will see it is slightly different with uh, certain information omitted from the post so unfortunately for this same reason robert wasn't really prepared to speak to me about this chemical this hormone that was used and i completely and utterly respect that so a large possibility for robert not wanting to share the same information with me is of course on one hand I own a plant shop so I can understand why you might not want to talk to me about these things and on the other hand obviously I have a YouTube channel so I have the potential to spread this information pretty far if I get my hands on it. So what I'm going to do is here I'm going to actually follow in Robert McCracken's footsteps and I'm not going to tell you the name of the chemical used and I'm not going to tell you the process used to you know create these plants and I know that might frustrate some of you or, you know, disappoint you in some way, but really I think I have a responsibility here to not spread this information so that things like this can't actually keep happening. If by any chance you know the name of the chemical I'm talking about or you know any of the processes involved, please, 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 I'm asking you very nicely to be responsible and to not share that out either in the comment section of this video or in any other public forum. Please be responsible. This is people's hard earned money that people are looking to spend on these plants and it's not right that people are doing this. So after speaking with Robert McCracken a little bit on Facebook, I did go ahead and do some of my own research. Now, I can't tell you about the processes again or the chemical involved. I'm very sorry. I must be responsible about this though, but I can tell you that there are some things out there that you just don't know about. I didn't know about it, you know, and I own a rare plant shop and I was just looking at some of this information on the internet and I was like, oh my goodness me. Okay. What I can tell you though is weird things are happening in terms of variegated plants. Let me tell you that. I found something on the internet. Robert actually pointed me towards this on Facebook the other day and it's very, very interesting. So this doesn't just happen with this plant. A lot of weird stuff is going on. Now, let me just find this post because I'm going to have to probably read it to you and everything else because I've sat here with a laptop, by the way, that's why I'm kind of leaning over. Now, before I show you this post, I'll explain it a little bit. So there is an individual that has put a post up on Facebook of an image of a plant saying, yes, this is a new hybrid and 
It doesn't necessarily look like a new hybrid, I will say that. Before I show you this post, I would like to make known that we cannot assume that the person posting this to this Facebook group knows that this plant is basically a fake as well. So do not send any hate to this person because we don't know if they were informed or not. We have no idea. So I know we have a few Calathea fans still in our midst. So this one is for you, Calathea fans. Here we have supposedly an image of a Calathea Macoyana pink diamond, a new cultivar without a registered name. And that is what the poster has posted. Now, my boy Robert from Facebook had a lot to say on this subject, but let's take a look at some of the comments first. Now, immediately what I can see from looking at this is that some people are already actually suspicious. Somebody here says, I'm now suspicious of everything after the pink Congo thing, which is quite funny because this is clearly the same thing happening here. Someone said, I think it looks like it has some sort of virus. So they're clearly questioning at this point whether this looks real, because honestly, this is just a terrible attempt in my personal opinion. This is like, if you're gonna fake a plant, you need to try a lot harder than this, am I right? Like that just, it does look bad. It really does look bad. Someone's saying sign me up if it's harder than the white fusion. So here we already have some people that have fooled. I don't trust anything pink nowadays. <laughs> I'm not gonna read that out loud. I'm gonna blank that out probably because I'm aware that I have children watching this channel. So I'm gonna blank out all swear words. Mums, don't worry about it. I got you. Robert McCracken, here we go. I'll go for credible variegation. I actually still remember what natural variegation patterns look like and this ain't it. My boy Robert's jumping in. The poster, post again and says this is all natural variegation not chemically induced and this is where Robert really pulls it out of the bag because he says I don't believe that for a nanosecond I've never seen nature produce a margin like that but I have seen a house pane to leave that exact dabbing on window panes to razor off later it makes no difference that it's not sprayed you really shouldn't have associated your name with that piece of work someone else says underneath I'm glad that I'm not the only one that thought this was a scam. It looks like it's been sunburned, as you said, painted. Now, if we do take a look at this image, guys, this is just, it's hilarious. Because whoever has painted this on, I'm guessing this is a topical way of variegating this plant because you can see here on this top leaf that the paint, the paint, starts from halfway up the leaf and you can clearly tell it's been painted. It goes around the edge and then that's it. And then the other leaves don't even look the same either. I guess the bottom right leaf looks like it's had some kind of good attempt, I guess. But the rest of it, I mean, you can tell someone's taken a paintbrush to that. And it's like, this is where we're at now. This is where the whole rare plant thing is going. This is where, you know, people have a love now of variegated plants. We're really starting to appreciate the true, you know, rarity and beauty in it. And then you have whoever is responsible for this genuinely trying to pass this off as a thing to potentially sell this on guys and i know to a lot of you guys maybe watching this is obviously you know a bad paint job but to a lot of people they may believe that this is a thing and they're going to spend you know i don't know possibly three four hundred percent more than what they would have spent just buying a normal calathea mycoyana or god forbid maybe a white fusion that actually is like that when it comes out So, if this is fake, what does it mean? Well, what it means is because this plant here, this Congo, has been treated with chemical X, we will call it, this plant is going to revert. Now, I can't tell you how it was treated, but just know that when the chemical supply contained within this plant runs out, this plant is going to be green. No pink, no nothing. The current, you know, cell of these plants at the moment is that these leaves start pink and then they fade to green. That is not true. I mean, they, don't get wrong, these will fade to green and I will show you this in just a second. But what will actually happen is once this plant has used up the supply of the chemical that is contained within this plant, the only new leaves that are gonna grow on this thing are these ones right here, green. New pink will not come in. That is absolutely not going to happen. It is completely fake, completely temporary. This is not like how plants such as the Philodendron Prince of Orange grow in that they do start a different color and fade. And I can prove that quite easily with photographs. So if you do actually do a Google search on these bad boys, you will see a lot of images, trust me, a lot of images where these things are actually reverting like in the pictures, like it's not even well hidden. You can usually see from the images I remember seeing, I will obviously put images up on the screen now, you're probably already looking at them, 
But uh, the images I've seen, the reversion starts at the tip of the leaf and works its way back up. On occasion, I've seen it come from the edge or from, you know, the, the part where the stem reaches the leaf. Nine times out of 10, I'm seeing it from the tip. But honestly, have a Google for yourself. The sheer amount of images you can see where these things are already reverting is, it's pretty prolific actually. When other plants change, you know, to green from fading in, like my philodendron ghosts, uh, philodendron prince of orange, all of the rest, they do not fade down in this way. You can see from the images, it doesn't look natural. Like nothing about the reversion process on the pictures that I'm showing you, or I have shown you, is natural. Like you can just tell. It just, it doesn't look right. If you haven't already guessed, these things are starting to revert. People are now starting to notice. Here is a post from not too long ago of somebody on Facebook basically saying, is anyone interested in a reverted pink Congo? So it is happening. I mean, I could find a million more posts like this, but quite frankly, we ain't got the time because we need to go into some really juicy stuff right now. So now I'm going to go on to what the sellers have to say about this and this may be a little bit juicy so feel free to grab a drink or a snack and pause this and come back. So very much like the poster of the variegated what was it? Makayana before. We can't assume that every single seller knows that these plants, you know, aren't real, aren't fake, because they have huge price tags on them. So we have to wonder really how far up the chain that this has kind of started. So I imagine, obviously, the original supplier that is doing this to these plants kind of had a bit of a brainwave when this whole pink princess thing came about, right? And thought, okay, I can cash in on that. It's pink. People love the pink. So they start to supply, you know, this new plant to local suppliers or friends or close, you know, close business partners or whatever, local to where they're from, they then pass that out. So the top supplier has the knowledge of fully what is going on and quite potentially the suppliers around this individual possibly also has the knowledge this is going on. Now, by the time they supply these plants to the next chain of suppliers down, the, the information there gets a little bit muddy. This is the time when suppliers are probably not going to say the true origin of these plants and the fact that they will revert and everything else, because this is the time where we start to push things down the chain. By the time you get to a run beneath that, so you've still got some suppliers and even some retailers are coming in. The spread of information that is known is just getting more and more diluted as we go down. And by the time you get to people like me and other sellers, independent sellers, really it's what you can find out on Facebook because by the time you get to the bottom, we just have rumors. And that is basically what is surfacing right now, the rumors. So what I'm trying to say is we do not know what other sellers know. I know that I didn't know anything until I found all this out, but I can't speak for other sellers necessarily unless it comes out of their own mouths, basically. Now, I'm probably going to spill a little bit of tea here, as it's known in the beauty community. In my terms, it's called dishing the dirt. So if you don't like the whole tea spill thing, I apologize, but we're about to slide into some DMs right now. I've teamed up with another YouTuber known as My Clean Leaves. If you do not know who she is, she's absolutely fantastic. Please go and check her out. I will leave her link in the description. But basically, when this Congo thing came about and I did a post on Instagram, she was very, very keen to spread the message like I know a lot of you were when you saw that post. By the way, thank you very much for spreading that around. And My Clean Leaves actually messaged a few sellers. Now, I don't actually know which website she actually messaged these sellers on. I don't think I asked her, but I'm sure she will tell you anything you want to know, other than, of course, who these sellers were. As these messages I'm about to show you are essentially private. I'm removing any information that would suggest who the seller is, so you will not see anything of the sort. So what My Clean Leaves did was she approached various sellers that she saw selling these pink Congos on these websites for, you know, these large sums of money and messaged them to basically tell them that the plant was fake. So I have a few responses from this. So we're going to get into some DMs now. And I think I'm going to start with the most positive responses first. So I'm going to read out what I have. Again, I'm going to use the laptop because it's a lot, you know? Now, I apologize, I do not have what My Clean Leaves has said prior to this, but I presume, of course, she has simply messaged the seller and said, hey, have you seen this post on Instagram? They're fake plants. You should spread the word, spread awareness. That's what I'm trying to do. So here we have an example of an absolutely fantastic seller. And the seller, number one, says upon being told this information, thank you, I will spread the word, taking it down now as well. My Clean Leaves says, you're welcome. The other seller says, wow, that's crazy. 
And my clean leaves replies with, I know, the plant community is such an awesome place. I just hate when you get those few people that try and mess it up. So that is an example of a really good reputable seller that actually cares about the people that they sell these plants to rather than just simply making a profit. So that is a very, very good example of a seller. I wish I could publicize who they are because they're clearly a great seller, but in the spirit of fairness, I cannot. Now this gets a little bit more interesting with seller number two. Seller number two says, I'm gonna rephrase slightly to account for any grammar. Thanks for letting us know. We know this and every seller knows it as well. This is not new news. Please read our description. It is disclosed that they turn back green. My clean leaves responds, Hey, all good. Just was notified and figured I would do my due diligence. Wanted to help sellers out in not getting bad reviews. It is misleading and the prices are insane for a regular old Congo. The seller responds, thanks for letting me know, I highly appreciate it. So as far as seller number two goes, this isn't really a great response. Clearly, you know, they appear to be in the know and they're even suggesting that all other sellers, you know, know that this is a thing and we're just basically scamming people. So as a seller, I don't necessarily appreciate that, but okay. They do tell my clean leaves to read their disclaimer. I haven't seen this disclaimer, but I can only assume, of course, that it does state that these plants revert to green maybe after some time, maybe, you know, once the leaf is aged, I don't really know, but we can assume there that there is a disclaimer there. My Clean Leaves also implies that this Congo is being sold for quite a high amount of money. I don't know how much right now. Uh, I assume it is, of course, possibly the same price as a Pink Princess, for example, so that is worth uh, noting. This, to me, does raise a bit of a talking point, but I'm gonna get to that a little bit later because it does surface up a little bit later on as well. Now, seller number three takes a slightly different approach. When clearly being shown what looks like my Instagram post there, they simply write, I have read this, but verifying the truth. So there are two options here. And again, we don't know which one is, you know, the correct one, but option A is that the seller actually knows that these Congos are fake and really they just want to bide their time, sell a few more, play ignorant, and just kind of get them out the door and get that cost price back. Or of course, option B, what they're saying is true and they genuinely don't just want to go off essentially what they've seen here, which is my Instagram post basically saying, oh, these plants are fake and they want to just find out more about it and do more research or speak to more you know sellers behind the scenes which is also absolutely fine and again we do not know which one is which so you can kind of take that either way depending on how you are as a person and how you read things but i just want to point out that in this situation we can't necessarily tell what the seller actually means by what they're saying if you take it as red, obviously they don't know anything, but personally, I see a little bit of darkness in people sometimes, so maybe that's just me, very sorry, but I live for the shade a little bit. I'll leave that one up to you guys. This one is interesting again. So seller number four has a similar response to seller number two. And when presented with the information that the Congo is fake, they say the following. Thank you. I learned that from my seller. It is posted and fully disclosed that it will lose the pink. Someone may want it for an event centerpiece though. My Clean Leaves responds. Okay, quite pricey for a Congo. Just hate how people are dying plants and classifying them as rare, kind of shady. And then it cuts off there. Again, Mine Clean Leaves is implying here that this Congo was also very expensive. What I've just shown you there are some screenshots of some snippets of DMs or conversations between a customer and a seller. Now, what I'm now going to show you is a conversation between two sellers. So a little bit of a different dynamic at work here. Now, there is some swearing in these screenshots, so I'm kind of going to read around it. So I apologize for that. But once again, if I have any children watching this channel, I'm not about to unleash a lot of swear words on y'all. So this conversation is a Facebook conversation that took place not much longer after Robert McCracken's original post where he unleashed, you know, the beast, so to speak, and told us all about the true nature of the Pink Congo, should we say. So we have two sellers here. The seller on the right-hand side is presenting the information to the seller on the left-hand side that these Congos are fake, and that is how the conversation begins. So I'm now going to try and read it out I may have to adjust what is said, but you get the picture. Looks like we've been screwed over on the pink Congo. I can't sell them now. And then the seller proceeds to provide screenshots of Robert McCracken's post. Seller on the left. Why can't we sell them? I've been following the post. Seller on the right. You not read it? Chemically induced? The rumors were true. And the seller on the left says, yeah, I knew they were true. Oh. Seller on the right. Once the chemical wears off, they will lose the variegation. Seller on the left, I was chatting to a few others about it. Seller on the left says, I will say they revert. I don't mind. As long as I state it, people can choose to buy them. My philodendron guy has had his over a year and is still producing pink. Seller on the right says, 
That's bad business practice, especially at the price they go for. Seller on the left. Buy them. I won't get them again though. I have 20, lol. Seller on the right. The ones that I have left are going in the bin. That will come back and bite you probably sooner than later. Then he basically says your supplier here is telling you porky pies. And the seller on the left responds by saying what and gives the name of the supplier. So what, you know, Dennis question mark. And the seller on the right says, interesting, it's him. I trust him. So clearly these two sellers have this supplier in common. The seller on the right says, I assumed it was a Thai person. They have bad things flowing out of their mouths. Seller on the left says, if I sell them and don't say they will revert, that's wrong. I wouldn't do that. Now the seller on the left has written would. I can only assume they mean wouldn't. He has his for a few months, not a year and still kicking out pink. But I thought they just said it was for a year. Anyway, seller on the right goes on to say, I know what you're saying, but they will. And then you are going to get a bad rep for selling stuff that you knew about. I wouldn't, but go for it. Seller on the left says, this is what's on my site. And I've had to blur the crap out of this because honestly, you can tell what website it is if I didn't blur this. So I blurred the crap out of it. I apologize. I know that's frustrating, but it's basically a image of a disclaimer on the website. Seller on the right says, my internet is terrible. So I'm presuming it wasn't loading or something. And then they've sent it again. And then they've circled the part where the disclaimer is there on the website. Seller on the right says, mm, but when it produces green leaves, your buyers will come at you with daggers. And then they follow that with, anyway, just be careful. Seller on the left says, yes, I should say that also. Seller on the right says, yes, I've had nasty customers hound me for years. <laughs> Seller on the left, some will care, some won't. I will put that at the top and make it bold. Seller on the right just puts a thumbs up. Seller on the left, let's see what happens. I wonder what other plants they do that to, probably loads. And then gives the name of a person. Blank, said they use it all the time in Asia. Seller on the right says, yes, more than likely, that's why there are tons of variegated stuff coming on the market. And I've blanked off the chat because it's not related. Now that this is actually the chat with me that raises the most questions because this is two sellers talking to each other behind closed doors, which makes it the most interesting for me. So seller number five, we'll call them, the person on the left-hand side of the chat there does acknowledge that it is wrong to sell these plants without a disclaimer, but doesn't think that maintaining that insane price tag on the Congo is wrong. So they're basically saying, I will put this plant out at this price and you can either buy it or not buy it. The disclaimer's there, it's up to you. One thing I will point out though, you can clearly see at the start of that conversation there that seller number five did not have a disclaimer on their website and they only did so when prompted that, you know, this was a bad thing. They also admitted to knowing that the rumors were true when preparing to sell these plants. So they were fully aware that these things do revert. And at that present time, they didn't have a disclaimer, which honestly, that's not too great. I think from seller number six's point of view, it's more about, you know, your reputation as a brand, as a business, what you can seem to be selling. Are people, you know, gonna trust you and buy from you again if they know that, you know, you're selling these plants. So a slightly different point of view as a way to come at it. Now, I do think this is a really, really good talking point, this disclaimer versus the price thing. I actually reached out to Robert McCracken to see what he basically thought of sellers doing this. So they say, you know, this reverts, but still keep the price tag on these plants. And he said the following. The disclaimer relieves them of legal responsibility. I can't take a position against people who are acting within the law. However, I would prefer they focus on the event market selling for pink themed weddings and Quinceaneras? I'm sorry, I butchered that. I'm very sorry, guys. Whether or not that was the original intention, it is a real market for this floral product that does not involve deception. So what he means there is, you know, from a legal standpoint, the sellers aren't doing anything wrong by putting the disclaimer there. So he can't really comment on that. And I guess that is fair. He's also saying that because these plants were originally intended for things like weddings, you know, that should still be used. There's no reason why this plant can't be sold or produced anymore. It's more like it belongs in the events market. Do you know what I'm saying? It doesn't belong in the rare collector's houseplant market because it's not real. It's designed to be temporary. So this may prompt the question in some of you, okay, well, you know, there is a disclaimer there. Why don't you just lower the price of the plant? Why just, just lower it? Like we all know it's less value, just lower it. Honestly, guys, the simple answer is they don't want to. They have a cost price on these plants. Obviously I have a plant shop. Everything has a cost price when it comes in and you want to at least get your cost price back or make some profit on that. So for a lot of reasons, sellers are not reducing their plants to even the cost price to get them out the door and just get rid. 
they don't want to, you know? What would be the reason to put a disclaimer there and not lower the price if it wasn't to get their money back? In my personal opinion, and this is my personal opinion, I think that sellers put disclaimers like this on listings on their websites and they don't really want you to read them. And again, that's my opinion, but the whole point of having a disclaimer there why sell the plant you know why not just cut your losses or sell it for cost price do you know what i'm saying why do that luckily obviously this has been a few weeks now since my instagram post a lot of sellers have removed this plant from sale completely or they have reduced the price upon finding out this information or they've generally they've done something about it so what i do want you guys to know is there are a lot of reputable sellers out there that are doing the right thing. I don't want everyone to take from this video, you know, like the, the plant seller community is corrupt or whatever. It's not. There are a lot of sellers that are doing the right thing. It's just, it's important to highlight the right things and the wrong things and give a balanced point of view. I realize this doesn't necessarily come off as balanced because I'm essentially telling you, you know, in a video, hey, look at this fake plant, look at this massive scam. But you get my point, you know, there are sellers out there that are doing the right things. Long story short, the philodendron pink congo is a fig. It doesn't exist. It's not a thing. It will revert. It looks nasty when it reverts. It's probably one of a few plants that are also undergoing the same process, which to be honest, may come to light in a few months. I don't know. I haven't seen these sold as pink princesses or anything like that, so don't get worried about anything of the sort. I haven't seen it. If you do see it, please spread the word because that is not right. If you are a seller selling one of these and you wish to continue to sell one of these, please, please, please put a disclaimer on and lower the price of the plant. There is no reason why people should be paying treble digits for these plants. It's insane. Like, I'm not saying don't buy these plants. If you love these plants and it was on your wish list or whatever, because I know that's actually the case for a lot of people. Um, I'm not saying don't buy the plant. I'm saying pay what it's worth. You know what I'm saying? If you really love it, by all means buy the plant. But please, 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 I'm begging you, don't pay treble figures for this plant. Don't even pay anywhere near treble figures for this plant. It's not worth it. It's, it's kind of worthless. It's not real. I, it, it breaks my heart to think about people that save up for money for plants and they spend them on things that just aren't real and they're a scam. Hopefully, people watching this video already know about this being a scam or they don't know about it but they haven't bought one yet now what concerns me is honestly the people that did not know this was a scam and have purchased these my advice is to speak to the seller as soon as possible you may or may not be entitled to a refund i don't really know all sellers are different they all have different policies on you know uh how long you can have your plants for how long they're guaranteed or anything else so feel free to speak to your seller maybe ask them if they knew about this i don't know but either way i believe you're entitled to your money back as long as it you know follows into their policy now it was brought to my attention of course that i could simply just get this refunded i'm sure it's on some sort of guarantee i'm not really sure but really i think i think it might be more useful to keep this because i think we could all learn a lot from this and i think we could all watch it revert over the next few months. And I will give you guys some updates on Instagram or whatever. I don't know if it needs an update video, but I will certainly give you guys updates on this. So I'm going to keep this um, and basically just watch it revert. Why not, right? Be fun. I can think of better things to do with 140 pounds, but hey, we're doing it. So from researching and preparing this video, I've found out a lot, uh, it, to say that it's colorful, you know, forgive the pun. There's a lot going on with sellers that we maybe don't know about. Not all sellers are obviously the same, so I'm certainly not about to tar them all with the same brush, but there is a lot going on in the plant world that I guess we're just not privy to. The talking point for me is this disclaimer thing, and I really, really, really would love to get a conversation going in the comments to see what you guys actually think about this. Like, do you think it is okay to charge, you know, X amount of money for a plant that you know isn't real or whatever? Because by putting the disclaimer on, you are acknowledging that you know that this is a fake. So is it okay to, you know, post the plant on your website, on Etsy, wherever it is, uh, put it for that price and put a disclaimer up saying, by the way, this happens. Is that okay or is that dishonest? Like, obviously, you know, from a legal standpoint, that's fine. That's probably why they are doing that because it's from a legal standpoint, you are protecting yourself. You've told the customer, you know, the information. 
But I don't know. For me personally, that doesn't sit very well, still keeping that price high. But I really, really, really want to know what you guys think about this disclaimer thing. And I guess what you think about anything, what you think about doing really bad paint jobs on Calatheas, what you think about, you know, what the sellers have said to each other, what you think about what My Clean Leaves has done and what she said and what those sellers have said back. And if you have any other subjects that you would like me to dish the dirt on, then please do let me know. I don't know if it will always take this format. I mean, I wanted a lot more information in this video, but I guess just due to the nature of what it is, I didn't want to spread the misinformation. So I apologize for that. But if there's anything you want me to, you know, dish the dirt on, lift the lid on, spill the tea on, whatever you want to call it, then please do leave a suggestion in the comments and I will definitely take a look at that. Thank you for watching this first episode of Dish the Dirt. Please leave your opinions, comments, questions, anything you like down below. Let's get a conversation going below and I guess I will see you in the next video. Bye guys!